Uh, Fitz, there are some updates to Penn State's uh, roster for the class of 2025, which we need to get to now in uh, Fitz's recruiting update. Normally, I guess normally being the last couple of weeks, maybe two months or so, Penn State has been on a tear fits, but some not as great recruiting news dropped yesterday. So what's going on with Penn State? Easter egg in that intro that you gave me, there was a player there not committed to Penn State. I just wrote an update on him in the class of 2025. Check it out on blueillustrated.com. But we will talk about Antonio Branch. The safety from Miami has flipped to Colorado. Uh, it's Again, we talked about this last week, uh, kind of polar opposites in, in in how those programs are approaching things right now. And uh, Branch has decided that he wants to be in Boulder. Um, so uh, more power to him. Uh, but that's uh, that's one that's, you know, was was one of those guys, one of those Florida recruiting guys that we talked about before um, that you were going to have to watch anyway. Um, this popped up a couple of weeks ago. He got an offer from from the Buffaloes and Deion Sanders, I believe, on September 5th, uh, visited there this weekend. You don't want your commits taking visits in the fall. I mean, it, it, sometimes you can try and talk yourself into he's just going to see something, see a spectacle or something like that. If they're taking a visit in the fall, it's probably something serious here. So um, it turned out to be serious. He flipped to Colorado. It was interesting because Penn State has been looking at safeties. I don't want to say contingency plan, but you got a Miami Northwestern kid committed to a school that's a thousand miles away. Um, you know, Colorado kind of throws a wrench into that theory. But at the same time, um, you, you were always looking for other safeties here. And I think it'll be interesting to see where Penn State pivots. I think they're going to look back at some of the guys that maybe they missed on earlier. Or they, maybe they offered and didn't quite get there with that prospect. You know, you, mm -hmm. you, when you follow it early in the session or early in the cycle, you understand that like you can only host so many guys for official visits. And then some guys are below the line, but some guys might have good seasons. We saw Penn State uh, offer Bradley Gompers uh, from, from Central Catholic a couple weeks ago. So senior risers are still in effect here. Um, they did offer... Uh, Indiana safety commit Byron Baldwin and two things here. I think Baldwin's going to commit to Colorado any day now. Um, so that's a really <laughs> interesting timing on that recruitment. Uh, St. Francis plays some corner, plays some safety. He's a good player. Um, yeah. But uh, no, that's uh, it was just it, it's just funny how that one worked has worked out to date. Um, like I said, I think he's going to commit to to Colorado any day now. The other thing here, and I was thinking about this today. Um, I really, really enjoyed uh, seeing guys that JMU was on really early. Uh, with with uh, with Signetti there, um, they did a phenomenal job to evaluate, and they had to because they're JMU. You kind of find yourself in that same position with Indiana. So there are some schools out there that you know used to be like this with Temple. You know, the, the, if you saw a guy that's like, oh, nothing else is going on, but the, the, they got a Temple offer, you might start seeing that with Indiana. And I know that sounds really funny to to Penn State fans, but like. Yeah, there's something to that here. So be curious to see how that uh, trend continues as, uh, you know, a couple of those prospects, just Rogers Rogers was, uh, was one of those ones that's committed to Penn state in 2026 had an early JMU offer from that staff. It's, it, it's just, it's just one of those things to, to, to just put in the back of your mind. Um, Kent state game, not a huge list of visitors um, from an offered prospect standpoint. I think the, the guy that really stood out the most uh, Elias cook uh, from, uh, from Harrisburg. This is one that I think, trending heavily in Penn state's direction, uh, was not ready to commit, but I mean, I, I think it is probably a good sign to keep this guy on commit watch whenever he visits next. Ryan Snyder wrote an update yesterday saying when he will visit next. So it'll be uh, good to watch that one. Penn state, interesting receiver, uh, receiver recruitment in 2026. Interesting. You've got LeVar keys and Jossier Rogers committed, uh, Cokes there. Um, they're supposed to get Davion Brown on campus this weekend. He got hurt on Friday night, Dr suggested he not make the trip which i don't blame him whatsoever yeah. uh not the first guy to have that so he'll be back at some point but a lot of targets in that 2026 class and and two commits and, and possibly a third here soon that for the receiver position that is i i don't think you can get enough good news with that particular position for penn state football fans something i'm just going to point out and then ask you your opinion on curious to see what you think um king mac conrad hussey Antonio Branch, all Florida safety commits, all either never joined or no longer with Penn State. Um, what do you think? It, is that just a coincidence? Because obviously they have other guys from Florida in the secondary on the team, but it just seems like that is a an odd number of players at one position to commit and then decommit from a program. 
not a coincidence. Uh, I think it's kind of file it under Florida recruiting. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's a it's a thin line to walk because you have to find, especially from Miami, South Florida, which is ironically where Jaywan Sider is the strongest. Is you got to find those guys that can walk and think that they can stick it out. And you thought King Mac could, um, and that was unfortunately one that did not go that way. Yeah. Um, and Penn State really, really would have liked to have him uh, this uh, this fall. Beside the point, not worth spending any more time on. But um, yeah, I think I think you do have to look at that strategy. It's like, what what are you getting out of this? You look at the guys that Penn State has gotten, or the guys that have bailed on Penn State, and it's just like uh, South Florida is very different than Central Pennsylvania. I don't know if anybody's picked up on that. Uh, or just <laughs> um, but it's uh, it, it, it's one that takes uh, it's worth taking a closer look at. Is yeah. how, how much time, how much effort is Penn State putting into South Florida? Is it worth it? Um, and it's interesting because I was talking to some people this week about it and it might be worth it at some schools. It might be worth it at Shaman Madonna. It might be worth it at some of those other schools, but Miami Northwestern, you know, Miami central is one where Penn state's got two guys committed to. I mean, there's, there's definitely questions about how much that investment is going to pay off. Cause you take a guy, um, you know, uh, Chris is having his own issues right there now, but like a, a guy like Randy Adarica, who's having a good year is a good player. Penn state got on campus and you know, it's, it's pretty well documented that he wanted to go to Miami and Miami said, no, and he ended up at Penn state. Well, he has a great year. What's going to stop Miami from saying, Hey, come back over this way. Right. Uh, so like that, I think that's, that's cer so certainly something worth watching and, and, you need talent. You need those kind of athletes are not everywhere in the country. Um, mm -hmm. But at the same time, uh, those recruitments are also not everywhere in the country. So we'll yeah. see how Penn State approaches that moving forward. One last follow up to this particular conversation, then we'll get Nate Bauer involved here at the at the end. Um, the there is always this trend, it seems, of Penn State offers a prospect, and then suddenly there's a flood of other offers that come shortly thereafter uh, from other mid tier Power Four programs. I'm just curious with with Anthony Poindexter's track record of finding safeties that are not just big, but athletic and turn into, I think, real prospects, really good NFL level prospects. Is there also a little bit of, OK, he's identified these guys and then other schools that maybe have a little more punching power. Watch those uh, evaluations and then attack later. Is that, is that maybe a part of the conversation here or is that dig digging a little too deep? I mean, I think Penn state's one of the top evaluation staffs in the country. I'm not limiting this just to just uh, Anthony Poindexter. I think that you see that everywhere. You see a, a flood of offers after, after Penn state comes in. I just, uh, you know, was looking at some prospects and, you know, it's no coincidence that, you know, you look at Matt Zollers, um, you know, who's committed to obviously committed to Missouri uh, missing the season, but uh, Penn state was his first like big, big offer. And then all of a sudden it's like, Oh, this guy might be the number one quarterback in the country per on three, which I think is a little bit high, but whatever. Um, it's um, it's really interesting to watch that sort of waterfall that comes after Penn state offers and Penn state offers a lot of kids. So maybe that's just a coincidence there, but at the same time you could tell like, Fran Brown offering kids at Georgia that were like, Georgia's not coming north for Yazid Haynes. Like there's, there's right. no reason for them to come north for Yazid Haynes. And now he's at Syracuse, but um, it's just things like that. You start to notice over time. Uh, one last reminder. If you want to get more of this recruiting information, including what Nate or Fitz teased there at the beginning of this conversation, uh, promo code, we are 50% off our annual membership. There is not a better deal you could get from blue white illustrated. So sign up right now. Uh, the link by the way, is in the description of the video. It's the first thing there. You have the link to subscribe to blue white illustrated on YouTube. And then you have the link to subscribe to blue white illustrated.com. Just click that use promo code. We are, you'll get in, you'll get all that recruiting information.